Japan. Hey William, hola. Hola, bonjour, tout le monde. Listen, I am super excited because Festival da Canção, they are mixing things up this year. 16 songs, two semifinals, one winner, and one big rule change. People can sing in English or any mm -hmm. language they want. Are you ready to talk about it? Let's do this! Now, Debin, the English language rule, or AKA the non-Portuguese language rule, is now in effect. You can sing in whatever language you want. Is this a good thing? It's a great thing, although it disappoints me that everybody automatically assumes it'll be English, because everybody's saying English language rule. But it isn't. You can sing in any language. Which is fantastic, and we have to remember, ultimately, the quality of the song is what's important. You know, Vanya Fernandez, she sang in Portuguese, came second in her semi-final. She did. Back in 2008. She did. Serbia often sing in Serbian, their own national language, and they always, always do well. Suzy, Quero Ser Tua, that song is a fan favorite. It's in Portuguese. Yes, and it's fabulous. I still listen to it. So we're not saying anything against the Portuguese language. What we're saying is that the rule change will bring bring the contest into the 21st century by allowing people to innovate, to sing in any language. They're mixing it up, pushing the borders and the boundaries. Long story short, this is less limiting for composers. Guess what? You can still sing in Portuguese! Yeah, but ultimately, it's votes that count. Yes. So it's the song that is voted for that will sail through. And it could still be a Portuguese song. Hadiyas Asim. Ha ha ha! Love she it! She made the final. It was a good love song. Love it! But now they're going to have those traditional songs competing against perhaps more English language, more modern pop songs. Because let's face it, many, many modern pop songs are sung in English. The majority. It's true, a fact. True. And so this is Portugal saying, we're going to recognize that. We want to give our songwriters the biggest landscape to play on, the most opportunity. I think it's fantastic. And Portuguese radio as well is quite varied, because oftentimes when we've been to Portugal, we hear different types of songs, including English language songs, songs on their radio. So. It's crazy to then limit them further by saying that you can only sing in Portuguese. I mean, because there's already yeah. a three minute limitation mark. So Completely. why have additional impediments to your success? And it can really push a country forward. Let's look at Israel, 2011, 2012, 2013. It did not make the final. 2014, it did not make the final. You know what, 2015, we're gonna sing all in English with Golden Boy, 100% English. 2016, we're gonna sing all in English, and guess what? Both made of stars! I'm a golden boy, come to enjoy! They made the final both times, and in fact, Golden Boy came top 10, didn't it? It did, yes. And it's because, partially, because they switched to English, which allows the songwriters to kind of expand their oeuvre, the lyricists to expand their oeuvre. I think it's fantastic. There's, there's no drawback to this. If you said no Portuguese, that would be a problem. Because it's the traditional festival that counts out. This is a very Or long... if you said no fado, again that would that be, would be a, problem. a problem. La vida minha! Ooh, that was a good song. Love it, yeah. She did make the song. That was a good song. Great, really great fun. songs. It's important for us to actually speak to a Portuguese person. So we're going to now cut to our Portuguese correspondent, Bernardo da Vera Barrera, <laughs> who is in Lisbon, and he's going to tell us what he thinks. Hola, William e Devon. Finalmente tive algum tempo para me sentar, para discutirmos, discutirmos todas as alterações que foram feitas ao Festival da Canção Honey, 2017. Honey. They changed the language rule. You can speak in English. Oh, you want me to speak in English? Yes, now I can speak in English. Hello, how are you? I can speak in Spanish. Hola, como estás? I can speak in French. Je peux parler un petit peu en français. Two semi-finals, one grand final, and I only have one sentence for you. Amazing strategy, RTP. I'm not even saying this is going to be musically a fantastic festival that can sound. We need to wait for the songs to be released and the singers to be announced later in January. But on a strategic point of view, this is a one bet for RTP. The media coverage of um, the 16 composers, as well as the language rule drop has been intense here in media outlets or in media outlets here in Portugal, especially online ones. And uh, the engagement um, in younger audiences um, has grown as well. I've talked to some of my friends uh, that um, don't actually 
see Festival de Canção uh, and they don't see Eurovision often and they think the language rule drop is a step in the right direction uh, for Portugal and I, I, I share the same, the same opinion as well. This is an open door for diversity now. Uh, the 16 composers can now choose whether to write and compose the songs in English or in Portuguese or in whatever language they, they want and um, it's also internally um, a, good chon a good change for RTP. They scratched the, the in-house producers they had uh, on the last uh, couple of years, um, helping um, the writers and the singers to produce the songs and that was not actually uh, working. Um, as for composers, we have a wide range of composers for, for pop to rock for, to an alternative vibe. We have a lot of uh, composers uh, from alternative genres and that is going to be a lot um, it's going to be curious to see what they're bringing to the table this year and the majority of the composer are also singers so it's going to be curious as well to see if they're writing songs for themselves to perform in the competition or if they're actually going for different different artists uh, for the show itself uh, as I said, as I said already, two semi-finals and one grand final with a 50-50 split decision of on who is going to represent Portugal at Eurovision. Let's see um, what's going to happen. RTP um, already announced as well that the song that wins Festival Eken song will not be revamped for Eurovision. So that is actually a, a bit, a little bit more pressure on composers uh, to write the perfect song and the song they want to. Um, to send to Eurovision uh, with all the changes already in place because the song is not going to be changed um, at a produce uh, producement level producement level um, later later on for the artists is going to be amazing this is like Portuguese singers now or the majority of Portuguese singers now sing in both Portuguese and English and make it in Portuguese and English and Portuguese folks listen more to, uh, to songs in English than actually in Portuguese. So this is a step in the right direction for Portugal. You guys now can discuss the other chances in Festival de Canção. It's all for me. Goodbye. Again, echoing our sentiments. So we're not crazy. <laughs> but this is the point. You're going to have old living with new. That's only a good thing. It's a brilliant thing. But you know, in Portugal, as we both know, lots of televised contests with X mm. back to the voice. And yeah. You know, what are your thoughts on Festival de Cancel? Because of course, you know, RTP could have just internally selected. Look, I think that Portugal has a lot of great modern artists. Who's this guy, David Carrera? Oh my I mean, god! He's a hot, he's talented. But I think he could enter a contest and win. So he could enter Festival de Cancel and win. The thing is, in the past, Festival de Cancel was too traditional, so maybe younger voters weren't as interested because it was for old people. At least that's my perception on the outside. But at the point you let people sing in English, you're going to attract the new modern stars. You'll keep attracting the traditional Fado, you know, Portuguese language stars. And that mix is going to create a bigger audience. You're going to have a bigger talent pool to select from. I think it's fantastic. I think it's important that Festival de Cancel has a traditional element because it is the bastion of kind of traditional Portuguese music with all these new televised shows that come and go, one season here, one season there, one season gone, one season not renewed. It's nice to have the consistency, the longevity of Festival de Cancel. Which has been running for decades, I believe 60 years, I could be wrong. You could compare it to San Remo in Italy. Oh yeah! Or even the festival in, in Sweden in terms of its enduring mm. quality. In any case, that's what we think. What do you think? Has Portugal made the right decision by opening the language, you know, borders, by tearing down that wall and letting all sorts of languages pour in? Let us know here on Wibi Blogs. And you should subscribe, and I tell you why, because Wibi Blogs is hot on Portugal for next year, yes. and we are covering it on every beat, as well as attending Festival de Cancel. Serve us that <laughs> octopus, we are hungry. See you later. Bye! Right? I'm not sure. I had some octopus there once, it was delicious. <laughs>